awal, selamat kembali ke siri laman web asas. Cuba lihat laman web ni. Selain daripada gabungan warna yang terlalu kontra dan susun atur laman web yang berterabur, apa lagi yang membuatkan dua laman web ini tidak menarik dan tidak mesra pengguna? Hmm. Jawapannya ialah cara persembahan maklumat teks pada laman web tersebut. Cuba lihat bagaimana teks disusun pada laman web ini. Cara persembahan maklumat teks dikenali sebagai typography. Untuk memastikan pengunjung laman web anda tidak mempunyai masalah untuk mencari dan membaca maklumat pada laman web, cuba ikut enam peraturan mudah berikut. Yang pertama, jangan gunakan terlalu banyak jenis font yang berbeza-beza. Jika anda guna pelbagai jenis font, pastikan font yang digunakan mudah dibaca. Yang kedua, saiz font mestilah sesuai untuk tujuan membaca. Saiz yang lazim digunakan di laman web adalah saiz 16 piksel. Anda boleh gunakan tag heading untuk mencipta font yang berlainan saiz. Tetapi, jika anda guna saiz font yang berbeza-beza, ini juga boleh menyusahkan pembaca untuk mencari maklumat. Yang ketiga, kontra warna adalah penting untuk maklumat teks. Bayangkan font yang warna hijau muda di atas warna latar belakang hijau tua. Mestilah susah untuk baca. Kontra yang terbaik adalah menggunakan font warna gelap di atas latar belakang warna putih. Yang keempat, penjajaran teks dan panjang teks. Baris teks boleh disusun secara menjajar ke kiri, ke kanan, tengah ataupun penuh. Pilih penjajaran yang bersesuaian dengan tujuan teks anda. Setiap baris teks perlu mempunyai bilangan aksara yang sesuai untuk dibaca. Jika bilangan aksara yang sedikit seperti ini, mata pembaca perlu bergerak dengan kerap dan ini akan meletihkan pembaca. Jika bilangan aksara yang terlalu banyak pula seperti ini, pembaca akan mengalami kesukaran untuk fokus kepada kandungan teks. Secara lazimnya, bilangan di antara 40 hingga 60 aksara adalah bilangan yang sesuai untuk pembaca. Yang kelima, elakkan daripada menggunakan huruf besar sepenuhnya. Teks di mana semua aksara adalah huruf besar adalah sesuai untuk singkatan. Walau bagaimanapun, jika satu perenggan ditulis semuanya dalam huruf besar, ini akan menyusahkan pembaca untuk mendapatkan maklumat penting. Akhir sekali yang keenam, jarak di antara baris. Jarak di antara baris dikenali sebagai leading. Jika anda menambahkan bilangan leading, ini akan menambahkan ruangan putih di antara baris. Leading yang bagus adalah ruang yang tidak terlalu sempit dan tidak terlalu jarang. Okey, sekarang kita dah bersedia untuk mengubah suai laman web kita dengan menggunakan typography. Hai adik-adik di luar sana, guru-guru, ibu bapa ataupun para penonton, selamat kembali semula. Kita akan teruskan awal sesi yang seterusnya di mana mesti penonton tak sabar kan dengan iaitu tajuk Computer Science the Curriculum of the Future yang akan disampaikan oleh panel kita iaitu Mr. Pat Yong Pradit. Beliau merupakan ketua pegawai Akademi Code.org, sebuah organisasi tidak berasaskan keuntungan NGO yang berdedikasi mempromosikan pendidikan sains komputer. Apa tunggu lagi? Mari kita bersama dan melihat perkongsian daripada Mr. Pat Yong Pradit. Dipersilakan. This meeting is being recorded. Salam everyone. My name is Pat Yong Pradit and I'm Code.org's Chief Academic Officer. I'm very happy to be talking to you today. I want to thank MDEC for inviting me to participate in this year's My Digital Maker Fair. It's been an honor for us to work closely with the MDEC team for the past several years as an official Code.org international partner. Code.org is the organizer of the global Hour of Code movement. The Hour of Code is designed to give anyone a one hour introduction to computer science to show that anybody can learn the basics of computer science. And ultimately, uh, we want everyone to participate in the field of computer science. MDEC has taken the lead on organizing Hour of Code events in Malaysia since 2017. And we've featured some of the pictures from those events on the homepage of the Hour of Code website. In 2017, the Hour of Code in Malaysia was even awarded the highest participation in coding by the Malaysia Book of Records. Thank you to MDEC and the My Digital Maker partners for working so diligently to expand access to this important subject. And thank you to the students, teachers, parents, and everyone else participating in the events today. Now I'm going to go through my presentation 
which is about computer science, the curriculum of the future. So let's start off with what code.org looks like in Malaysia. Right now, there are 230,000 students and 7,500 teachers with code.org accounts in Malaysia. And what I want to do is talk about why those students and teachers chose computer science and why you too should be choosing computer science and working with us, code.org. So these are my students uh, from uh, AP computer science class uh, at Springbrook High School in Silver Spring, Maryland in 2013. AP computer science was an advanced uh, computer science class at the time. And this class represented everything I was uh, trying to achieve in computer science at this school. You see, I had been working at the school for eight years and building this program the entire time. And this program, uh, this class represents the culmination of all the things that I was doing. It's a class that's an upper level class and there are different uh, students in it from different ages, different races, different genders. And all these students uh, loved computer science and this was not just the only advanced class, there was actually, actually two extra levels of computer science after this. And I showed this picture just to remind everyone that everything that we do in computer science is about engaging students and giving them uh, uh, giving them a different future, a future where they can do amazing things that have never been done before. It's also about changing students' lives. And I want to talk about one student in particular. His name is Neiman. Neiman is the guy right in the middle. And Neiman connected with me on LinkedIn, um, which is a professional networking site. Uh, at many years after he graduated from high school. And he talked to me about his experience after joining the military, learning about cybersecurity, and then, um, and then uh, getting a job. And um, I told him how proud I was of him and, his, and, his, uh, and his, where he's uh, gone with his future. Uh, and he shared with me how significant it was for him to have an experience in computer science. Teachers, parents, I want you to know that this is what you're doing for your students and for your kids by introducing them to computer science. You're giving them an opportunity uh, that most of us didn't have when we were young. And you're giving them the skills to prepare themselves for the future. Our vision at code.org that every student in every school has the opportunity to learn computer science. Eventually, what this means is that teachers are trained and school districts adopt computer science uh, so that all students can learn computer science. And that means every, every student, because we believe that, that computer science is foundational. And so at code.org, we do four things. We create curriculum that's free and uh, our curriculum is actually translated into Malay. Um, we train teachers, we promote computer science, um, and we do policy work at the Ministry of Education level. Now I wanna share with you a vision for computer science, now that you've gotten to know code.org a little bit. And I wanna situate this vision for computer science in Malaysia. So let's talk about a girl named Noor. Noor, at eight years old, because of computer science, she learns that computers are not just a fun toy or a place to play games or watch YouTube videos. Computers are a creative tool, something that she can use to create stories and animations and games, her, her own games. And then at 13 years old, because of computer science education, Noor creates programs for a variety of her subjects. It could be science, it could be math, it could also be language. Then at 18 years old, because of computer science and computer science education, Noor is able to address and solve issues in her community. Maybe she makes a website for a cousin's restaurant, or maybe uh, she is able to create an app for, her, uh, for a, a local club. 
And so because of all that, Noor actually decided to uh, get a minor in computer science at college level and graduate. And you would think that maybe she became a programmer. And actually, she didn't become a programmer because she actually also majored in fashion design. That's right. So Noor didn't actually become a programmer at the end. And that's actually fine because you know what? Noor learned that she had a passion in fashion design as well and applied all of the computer science learning she got, even at the college level, to her, to her passion in fashion design and was able to make an LED lit up dress um, for a, you know, as part of her fashion design ex um, experience. And so she was able to apply computer science to fashion design. And that's what we want to see for all students. They don't have to all become software engineers and programmers. They're, they should be applying computer science to whatever field, career, or interest uh, they have. So how does computer science benefit students? Well, studies have shown that students who learn, who learn programming do better on tests for creativity, math mathematical skills, metacognition, that's like reflective thinking, um, spatial skills, and even reasoning skills. So it has a variety of benefits beyond just learning computer science. Here's an example of a tie-in between math and computer science. And here, a student is figuring out how to show, uh, how to register that a green rectangle or a red rectangle are touching one another. And you actually do this uh, understanding the coordinate plane and different corners and, and width and height of these shapes. And so if you use a, an algorithm like this, you can determine, you can have the computer determine whether two things are touching. And this is a very important uh, thing, uh, an important yeah. algorithm in very simple video games. And so he, here mm -hmm. you see the, the very deep mathematical and geom uh, geometry connection to uh, computer science. And this is where things really, where math can really come alive. Um, here is an example of students just learning uh, sequential thinking just by getting uh, a character to get to another character. And this is like using the famous Angry Birds characters um, from, the, from the, the famous game and now movie as well. And so um, by putting these instructions together in sequence, young kids learn how to create an algorithm. And so there are a bunch of creative um, benefits for computer science as well. It's not just math and it's not just sequential thinking and, and things like that. It's also fun and engaging. You can create stories and animations just like these that you see on the screen right now. So what do teachers think about programming? Well, well we have some quotes from teachers who have attended Code.org's um, workshops and use code.org curriculum. So the first teacher says that the smiles on children's faces show their joy and increase self-esteem during coding lessons. And yes, students build a lot of self-esteem when they're trying to fix their code and, and finally when they get it to work. Because in coding, you, you, things don't work and then you've, you can fix them quickly and then see how they work. And you can do this um, in, in a, and repeat them over and over again. And, and kids really build like this, this self-confidence because of that type of iteration. Um, and one autistic student in particular, uh, this teacher says that this uh, autistic student is relatively nonverbal and doesn't speak, but then was giggling with excitement because of the ability to create something with code. And this student was even asking questions. So it's really amazing. And, and in fact, uh, studies show that uh, students with learning disabilities are, are quite interested in computer science and uh, do very well. Um, another teacher said, I stopped to chat with one of my female students and she said, I can't believe it. I don't like video games at all. And I thought this class was going to be awful, but I love it. Coding is so much fun. And that's true. Um, it really, just by getting kids to code, it really changes their uh, perspective about technology um, when they're able to create it and not just like play things. Uh, this other teacher says, I really enjoy the AI unit, the artificial intelligence unit. 
it was thoughtful and approachable. It changed my mind as to when I should introduce this concept to my student. And what this teacher thought was that, you know, artificial intelligence, that's just for older kids. Well, in this case, um, he was introducing it at a much younger age and students really understood it and got it. So you can teach even advanced concepts, concepts like artificial intelligence to young kids and you should. Um, the particular tutorial here um, is called AI for Oceans and I'll be talking, that, uh, talking about that later. AI for Oceans is also translated into Malay. So I have advice for some school leaders. I know those school leaders in the audience and thank you again for doing uh, what you do and for supporting uh, computer science. Here are my five tips uh, for teaching computer science. And I wanna start off with number one, identifying a teacher champion. So um, school leaders, if your school isn't teaching computer science right now, all you have to do is find one teacher to start and get them trained. Um, MDEC uh, has a lot of trainings that teachers can attend and you can send your teacher to MDEC um, and they can attend workshops uh, and, um, and even learn about the Code.org courses. On the Code.org website, you'll also find um, self-paced online um, uh, professional learning modules for each of our courses where teachers can don't have to go to an in-person workshop. They can just go through a self-paced course to learn about uh, the course that they want to teach. And that goes with all of our courses. Uh, another piece of advice for school leaders is to create opportunities to teach CS in the curriculum. And so you don't have to just create a, an independent computer science course. You can create room in other subjects to teach computer science. And again, here's an example of learning about math and coordinates and um, in the context of creating a video game. So you can create opportunities to teach computer science across multiple subjects. School leaders, you should also actively dispel stereotypes in order to involve all students. This is called, this is called being inclusive. Now, when people think about a computer pro programmer, they often think about a picture like you see right here on the right. Um, and not all computer programmers look like that. And lots of computer programmers look very different. So it's very important to actively dispel stereotypes in order to involve all students uh, so that all students feel like they can belong in computer science. Number four, as a school leader, you should create a plan to teach computer science to all students and not just offer it and teach maybe 25, 30 kids a, a year, but really how do you teach it to all students so that they can all have the experience? And lastly, uh, school leaders, you should communicate your vision to parents, guardians, and family members. Basically, you should let them know that computer science is being offered at your school and that you want all your students to participate in it. I have advice for teachers as well. So my advice for teachers, starting with number one, start early. So start at a very young age in order for students to not just build up their skills so that they can create cool things, but they can have fun right from the beginning and feel like they belong in computer science and not wait till later. Uh, studies show that if you introduce computer science at a young age, um, you will get more participation, obviously, later on because uh, a lot of students won't already develop stereotypes where they feel like only certain types of kids should be in computer science. And in fact, at a young age, you have the same interest between girls and boys. That changes later on. We want that to uh, be different. You have to start at a young age. Uh, this is a picture of students who actually are learning about a computer science concept, but without a computer. And what they did was created the letter G on, on, the, on the floor, and they learned about pixels and coordinates and how a, a, school, uh, how a monitor works, uh, how graphics work, for computers and graphics are just numbers to computers, numbers for the colors, numbers for the position of the pixel, everything. So you don't even have to have a computer and you can teach it to five-year-olds. Uh, another suggestion is to set an interesting context and purpose. And this is actually a video game created by the UN um, to uh, talk about social issues, um, very serious social issues. Um, 
Wait, when you yeah. say uh, that an interesting text, text and purpose, purpose uh, you yes, we are, just, yes, uh, are able to give oh, a, a so reason just, why yeah, students yeah, are doing yeah, computer yeah. science. Uh, yeah. So just some just students might not be as interested in just okay, making yeah. something cool. They want to make something for a reason, a uh, personal reason. For example, let's, let's think about Muhammad. If Muhammad has uh, um, cows on a farm, uh, let, let's pretend that Muhammad is on a farm and and, and Muhammad uh, wants to um, organize the information about the cow. Well, Muhammad can create an app to track the cows on his farm. Um, let's imagine another purpose. Um, CT. Let, CT can create an app to organize the volunteers for her uh, for her club. Um, this is an app uh, that is very useful to her personally. Okay, okay. So you can create things that go beyond just school projects or fun, but create things that are actually useful for your life. Number three. Uh, you can do it in pairs. And so you don't have to be by yourself. With computer science, you can do this thing called pair programming. And with pair programming, two kids are at a computer. One person will type, the other person will talk and give uh, ideas and maybe read off the instructions on a handout. And then they'll switch roles every maybe 10 minutes. And what this does is it creates collaboration among kids. You're not by yourself. You're able to help one another. Um, and it's just more social than just being by yourself. This is called pair programming. There are actually videos about pair programming on the Code.org YouTube channel. Number four, uh, you, you can uh, introduce coding through dance. And make it physical. And in this picture, uh, kids uh, created an algorithm for uh, a dance using blocks and made a character dance on the screen. And so you see the kids dancing according to uh, the character um, that they coded to dance. So that's pretty cool. You can also connect computer science to other disciplines. <clears throat> in this case, this is an animation of the water cycle in science. Here is uh, a picture of art using different shapes, and you can learn about geometry that way. And here is a historical animation about dinosaurs. Uh, so again, you can connect computer science to other disciplines. Um, rather than use PowerPoint for a presentation, you can use a program. So. Uh, here are uh, the next steps that uh, I want you to consider in promoting computer science. So the first thing is you can start small and do an hour of code. A lot of the hour code activities are translated into multiple languages. Um, and uh, I already talked about dance party. So you can create a dance party with famous songs, um, but you can also learn about artificial intelligence and do an activity called AI for Oceans, which is, again, translated into Malay. Um, and in this uh, tutorial, uh, students learn about training a model to identify fish in the ocean and not trash. Um, and this AI, what it will do is it will clean up trash in the ocean uh, depending on how well you train it. And that, that's what actually happens with artificial intelligence. It uses data to be trained and to learn from that data. You can also teach uh, full courses for computer science. And this is the URL for those courses. Uh, you can go to this website, teach computer science fundamentals, which again, this course is fully translated into Malay and um, teach students um, between you know, 15 and 20 hours of coding uh, per course. And this goes from the youngest ages to uh, ages all the way to like upper primary, lower secondary level. So in the end, I want to say to all of you, thank you for uh, watching this presentation. Um, I hope that I've convinced some of you, if you uh, aren't familiar with computer science, as to the benefits of computer science and um, the steps to take in order to get involved. Um, I invite you to join co.org and the, and the 230,000 students and 7,500 teachers in Malaysia uh, that are using uh, Code.org. Thank you.
Terima kasih kepada Mr. Pak Yong Pradit di atas perkongsian tersebut. Baiklah para penonton sekalian, terima kasih diucapkan lagi sekali lagi kepada Mr. Pak Yong Pradit di atas perkongsian ini. Jangan ke mana-mana, kita akan bertemu seketika. Selamat kembali ke video siri laman web asas. Susun atur memainkan peranan yang penting dalam mereka bentuk web. Susun atur yang tidak baik seolah-olah bilik yang tak kemas. Anda akan mengalami kesusahan untuk mendapatkan maklumat atau barang yang hendak dicari. Seperti yang anda lihat pada contoh ini, susun atur yang baik dapat menarik perhatian pengunjung. Selain daripada menjadi komponen terakhir dalam mereka bentuk web kali ini, susun atur juga merupakan komponen yang paling penting. Terdapat banyak jenis susun atur di luar sana, tapi hampir kesemuanya berasal dari model asas ini. Laman web pada asasnya mempunyai header, menu, kawasan kandungan dan footer. Susun atur secara ringkasnya adalah cara penyusunan bahagian-bahagian ini dalam susunan yang mesra pengguna. Di sini, kita akan fokus kepada tiga jenis susun atur yang lazim diguna. Tapi ingat, ini hanya contoh susun atur yang biasa digunakan. Terdapat banyak lagi susun atur yang wujud di luar sana. Dua susun atur yang paling lazim digunakan berasal daripada penyelidikan pengesanan mata atau eye tracking. Penyelidikan ini mengkaji bagaimana mata manusia berinteraksi dengan kandungan web. Terdapat dua corak utama. Yang pertama adalah dalam bentuk corak F. Corak F biasanya wujud untuk laman web yang ada maklumat yang padat. Dalam corak F, mata kita akan bermula melihat kepada kandungan di penjuru atas sebelah kiri dan bergerak dalam corak F. Menggunakan corak ini, kita boleh letakkan maklumat yang paling penting di penjuru atas sebelah kiri kerana lokasi inilah yang pengguna akan lihat dahulu. Cuba perhatikan corak ini di laman web-laman web yang anda kunjungi. Untuk laman web yang mempunyai maklumat yang kurang padat atau jarang, mata kita bergerak dalam corak Z. Laman web UNICEF adalah contoh yang baik bagaimana corak ini digunakan untuk menarik perhatian pengguna. Susun atur corak F dan Z menghasilkan hierarki dalam susun atur laman web. Ia mengawal pergerakan fokus mata kita dari satu tempat ke tempat yang lain. Hierarki ini juga boleh dihasilkan dengan mengubah suai warna, saiz atau kontrak. Tanpa hierarki seperti gambar di kanan, pembaca sukar memberikan perhatian dan mereka akan hilang minat dengan cepat. Namun, contoh di sebelah kanan mempunyai hierarki akibat daripada penggunaan warna, susun atur dan imej. Ini akan menarik perhatian pengunjung dan susun atur ini dapat mengawal fokus mereka. Susun atur ketiga kelihatan seperti green card. Susun atur ini sesuai apabila kita ingin mempersembahkan maklumat yang banyak dan padat dan mempunyai tahap kepenyakan kepentingan yang sama okay. kepada pengguna. Susun atur ini tiada hierarki. Pengguna didedahkan kepada Dekat semua saya. maklumat pada masa yang sama dan mereka pilih urutan untuk mengakses maklumat ini dengan sendiri. Contoh yang baik untuk susun atur ini adalah laman web YouTube dan Pinterest. Sebelum kita hasilkan susun atur, kita perlu hasilkan draft laman web kita. Catatan ataupun lukisan ini dikenali sebagai wireframe. Anda boleh hasilkan wireframe dengan tangan ataupun menggunakan servis web untuk menghasilkan wireframe dengan komputer. Jumpa lagi dalam siri video yang akan datang. Selamat mencuba! Baiklah para penonton sekalian, sekarang kita akan beralih kepada sesi kita yang seterusnya iaitu Virtual Robotik di mana panel kita adalah Encik Muhammad Taufik Abdul Salim, STEM Coach daripada EDU 360 Academy. Hai Encik Taufik. Hello, hai apa khabar? Selamat petang dan selamat Alright. datang Encik Taufik. Uh, mungkin Encik Taufik boleh kenalkan serba sedikit tentang latar belakang Encik Taufik dan apa topik kita pada hari ini. Okey, um, nama saya Taufik. Okey, nama Muhammad Taufik uh, bin Abu Salim. Alright, so uh, bekerja di Edu Trinity Academy. Alright, so saya latar belakang uh, fizik dan juga sains uh, juga termasuk dalam STEM. Alright, uh, untuk kita punya subjek hari ini, alright, kita akan uh, 
belajar mengenai uh, virtual robotics. Okay, virtual robotics yang kita akan uh, belajar pada hari ini adalah uh, Vexcode VR. Okay, so nanti saya akan sharekan uh, website dia alright, bersama uh, di screen ni. Okay, untuk uh, sebelum itu uh, saya nak bagi tahu alright, untuk Edu360 Academy uh, kami berpusat di Edu uh, berpusat di Kota Damansara. Alright, uh, so nanti boleh tengok dia punya uh, alamat lah. Okay, so boleh check kat sini Edutis Academy dan mungkin uh, .com.my alright, dan boleh uh, check di sini. Alright, so ini kita punya website. Okay, kami punya website. Uh, so kami dah uh, berada dalam industri ni dalam uh, 10 tahun dan termasuk dalam 2001-2002. Okay, pas COVID also uh, dah termasuk 10 tahun lebih lah. Okay, so dalam tahun ni dah usually uh, mainly berpusat di Kota Damansara dan kami akan pergi ke sekolah-sekolah juga uh, yang berdekatan termasuk uh, Selangor dan uh, Kuala Lumpur lah. Okay. Okay. Boleh mula ke? Okay. okay. Alright. So Okay, alright. Untuk ni, uh, untuk Edutricity Academy, ini adalah uh, website utama kami. Okay, our main website is here. Okay, so I'll switch to uh, English because uh, I want to have a wider uh, audience. Okay, so this is uh, our main website, which is Edutricity Academy, Children's Maker Academy. Alright, you can go to this website later on. Alright, um, which you can see on my screen here. Okay. And you can read about uh, about this uh, about the companies here a bit and about the courses. So far, we have animation course, uh, scratch coding course, um, and mostly we uh, teach Lego robotics and the coding as well. Okay, and uh, the mostly the the new one is Python's coding. All right. So obviously, uh, Python coding is part of the STEM and is uh, in the coding section. Okay, and we mainly teach basic first. Uh, and we targeting. Uh, the middle school students, right? Primary primary school students, we also uh, uh, can teach the Python, but in a in a much simpler syllabus. Okay, we also can uh, can teach the smaller smaller kids, right? Uh, with a simpler syllabus. Okay, and uh, and this is all what we have. Uh, we have on uh, regular weekly class, uh, which is only on uh, weekend. All right, uh, weekends we have the students coming to the center as usual. All right, and uh, on weekdays we go to the school. All right, so you can contact uh, the number here, right? Provided here in this uh, in this website, all right? If you want to reach us, okay, uh, to ask more about uh, our academy, all right? So especially for those who are uh, living in Selangor and uh, Kuala Lumpur area, okay. And uh, we also have the school, uh, online school, okay, that which we. Um, Established in the last two years, which is the during the COVID, okay, which is called uh, Mechology Programs. This one, like what you can see on my screen. All right, so this is uh, basically a maker school, all right, just like a usual usual school, but uh, only four different subject, okay, that we have. Okay, so this one, uh, we open up for those in Selangor and Kuala Lumpur, and also for those that. Uh, not in Selangor and, uh, and Kuala Lumpur, all right? If you are in uh, Perak, Trangano, and any other uh, states, you can join us as well by using this because this one, you don't have to come to our center. You just need to, uh, just like this, okay, a virtual, okay, from your home, okay, from home, and we're going to meet by virtual, okay? Just like what we are doing right now, okay? And um, this one, we have year one, two, year three, and year four, and for each year, we have a uh, different different subject, and uh, maybe one or two years in the beginning, we have this uh, one or two subject will be the same, but with a different level, uh, all right? Uh, so level one, for example, scratch coding level one, and for the next year, scratch coding level two, and this will go on for the whole years, all right? So if you want to know more about this, you can go to mechology.com, all right? So please save this, uh, remember this, all right? If you want to go look at this. All right, uh, you want to know more about this Mechology program, you can go to here. And this is uh, the class for Mechology is running on weekends only. All right, so only Saturday and Sunday. All right, regarding the times, all right, the, uh, the time slot, whether in the morning or in the afternoon, you can reach us uh, where, you, where you are free. All right, and then we are going to uh, tell you guys, uh, tell you uh, which one is uh, the free slot and which one you can join. All right, 
Okay. All right. So this, uh, this is for our online class. All right. And uh, this one, mostly in our physical class, we have uh, scratch coding, Python, and also uh, Lego robotics, which is our main, uh, our main subject in this academy, Lego robotics. Okay. Uh, Python and scratch coding, we also do have here. All right. In the in the academy, for those who are requested in the physical class. All right. So we can also arrange for that. For uh, I know that some parent would like to have um uh, would like to have a physical class okay instead of online class so they can try to reach us and and then uh, we we will collect for those who want a physical class and then we can uh conduct in a physical at the uh, at our academy all right okay for the class okay the same goes to scratch coding and animation all right and we also have uh before we start with the lessons all right uh for the vet code vr okay we also can have uh, school holiday program okay um the poster is in the making all right and uh for the school holiday program which which will be on uh, december this december all right by the end of the year all right so we have like one one to one one weeks and maybe one or two weeks all right we are going to handle these uh the school holiday programs okay uh also including uh, includes all the uh, almost all of the topics that we uh sorry uh, the subject that we held in our academy all right, so Lego robotics, animations, um, Python coding, and uh, Scratch coding. Okay, uh, all so please uh, reach us and book your slot uh, later on uh, when the post is out. All right, so you can check. Uh, this is our uh, Facebook page. All right, for Edu Tuesday Academy, you can go uh, search Edu Tuesday Academy here. All right, uh, to your Facebook. All right, you can read all here and uh if the posters comes out all right uh the post the post will come up here okay the, to the latest one all right and then you can uh try to book your slot okay for uh the school holiday programs in the coming december all right okay so you can see her uh one one more uh subject that we started also mobile application all right and this one is not a very advanced uh not advanced mobile apps that being created because we have uh, focus on this uh, mobile app, uh, this special mobile apps uh, subject for uh, smaller kids, all right? So the smaller kids can follow along, okay? Uh, so it's not very complicated for, uh, complicate, complicated for uh, the smaller uh, st student to join, okay? And to grasp uh, in the making of these apps, all right? And uh, Lego Robotics, is uh, basically, you, you can hold it, all right, and all, okay, and coding Scratch and Python. I believe uh, most of the students uh, recognize what is Scratch coding is uh, very famous, all right, and uh, Python is uh, is a real Python, which is the advanced uh, coding program, okay. Uh, so this one, we mostly uh, targeting the middle school student, all right, for Python's uh, coding, all right, and 2D animation is open to both, which is primary school or uh, and middle school, all right, to 2D animation. Okay, uh, which is quite interesting because uh, the only limit is your Im imagination in this, all right, for this 2D animation. Um, and the last one is Arduino electronics. Uh, we have Arduino uh, still, okay, so uh, we might open up this Arduino in the school leader programs coming up. But uh, we are in the space in the, in the academy, all right, so uh, we probably can take up to 10 students per class, all right, per, per slot. Okay, uh, per class there. Okay, we might help two class at the same time. So yeah, okay. So the first, uh, the earliest, all right, uh, will be better, all right, to books. Okay, all right. So today we're gonna focus on uh, since we cannot make a, uh, okay, uh, physical robots. All right, I cannot, uh, I cannot, we cannot build together. So I'm gonna show to you the things that you also, you also can do. If for those of you that uh doesn't have a physical robot like Lego robotics or any other robots out there, if you wanna try. All right, uh, to do a coding and you will also want a robots, okay, but it's a, we have a virtual robots and it's a free, which is a very, uh, which is a, is a very important stuff, all right, uh, nowadays, all right, free here, you can go to the Vets Code VR uh, website, which is vr.vex.com, all right, so this uh, website uh, allows you to do a coding and for a virtual robot to move around in the playground, all right? We call it a playground uh, as a stage, okay? Like for scratch coding, we have a stage where you can see the sprite moving, okay? But this one, we have we call it a playground where you can see the robots uh, moving according to your programming, all right? And if you look at my screen right now, okay, we have, uh, you can see the layouts of these Vex code VR, 
All right, uh, these, you can see the coding is almost looks like a scratch coding, which is a very good thing because it's, uh, it's, it's very kids friendly, which is a smaller students also can try to do this. All right, and you don't have to type very much in this. You just need to click and drag it to uh, this section area to do your coding, just like the scratch coding. Okay, so if you want a robot to drive forward, keep driving forward, just drag the first block here, drive forward and put it below the when started. Okay, and then you can open up on the right side here, you have a start button. Okay, or if you want to check, uh, if you want to check uh, how many playground you have, all right, you can click select playground here. And then there's uh, quite a few, uh, quite a lot here actually, all right, uh, playground that you can choose from. And uh, for the first one, let's try to go to a uh, grid map, okay, uh, one of the basics uh, map or playground that we can test, all right, especially if you're new, all right, so this, uh, this programming, okay. So please wait for a bit for it to open here. And there you go, so you can see here, you can expand this uh, playground a little bit to become a little bit like this. All right, uh, you can shrink it and you can even hide it. All right, so why do we need to hide? Because uh, you're gonna do the programming here. And after you do the programming, so you wanna check whether your programming is right or wrong. Okay, you can click on show here and then click the play button down here. Okay, to see how your robots move. Okay, if it goes wrong, you don't want the robot to do like that. You can hide it or you can stop it. Stop down here. When you click play, stop it here. All right, click the square black button here okay to stop it and then click hide all right and then you can see your codes again all right and then we can modify here okay so we're going to go through uh this uh this a bit by bit we're going to have uh a bit of activities today all right and uh which you guys can try all right all of this uh you can try at home all right and uh let me let me show to you here all right i'm gonna have uh to show to you one of the First activity here, which is all right. Okay, the first one I'm going to show to you. This is uh, going to be our first activities that uh, going to be we're going to do here. Okay, so this activity is called a grid map spiral. Uh, okay, so this one we are making a spiral. Uh, you know the circle spiral. Yeah? This one is a special spiral which is in the shape of a, a square. Okay. And uh, we're going to use the grid map uh, playground, okay? The playground that we just uh, opened just now, all right? And uh, the, main, uh, the main objective for this is, okay, that you can see the challenges there, all right? On my screen here, they are, the challenges are separated to three, okay? But I cannot do all three here because uh, we only have one hour here, okay? Uh, maybe less, all right? So we're going to do uh, maybe one of these challenge, all right? So let's go to challenge number one okay so challenge number one uh you need to program the vr uh, robots to draw a spiral that hits every square on the grid map okay so basically if you look at the picture above here this is the what this is how your uh how your playground should looks like okay once you finish your mission or challenge okay so you, you uh, not only you need to make a spiral movement you also need to draw a line, okay? Uh, you need to make the robots to draw, okay? Which you uh, which you can see after this, the robot actually have a pen, okay? You can choose a, a few colors, all right, uh, for the robot to use and to take out the pen, to draw on the map or to draw on the playground here, okay? And you can also choose the thickness of the line, all right? And then when the robot goes, the line will follow. Uh, you can see the line from the back, okay, of uh, the robot, okay? So let's do number one. Okay, this one, if you look at this, it uh, look very simple, but for some student, I believe this is quite tricky. All right, so uh, let's do one by one. All right, so here it says to hit every square on the grid map. All right, if you look at this, the starting of our robot, let's go to the VAT score VR again. If you look at the, uh, if you look at the playground here, this is the location of our robot, okay? It's on the, bottom left corner of the of the playground here. It's not in the middle, okay? So remember, every time, uh, look where is your position of your robot, okay? So your robot is on the bottom left corner. So, uh, so here, if you look at the challenge again, we need to, you can start the to make the spiral shape from that position, and you need to lead your robots, uh, program your robots to go until the robot's going 
to the middle of the playground okay and stopping there in the middle okay so we're gonna do we're gonna do this uh one by one all right so let's go to let's go vr again okay so we know that uh, the robot is starting from here and we need to go up all right to go to the top here and not only that we also need to draw a line along okay so let's go to one by one all right this one you can put it on the right side you can drag it to the right you can drag it to the left or you can just hide it first okay now drive forwards what's happened if you put drive forward only when you click the play the robot will go straight non-stop and it it will hit the walls all right you may not see the walls uh, very good at this uh, at this angle all right let me show you to some let me show you something here Okay, in the Vexcode VR, if you look and on this playground on the bottom right corner, we have three separate camera angle that you can choose. Okay, if you want to see the robots move, you can choose uh, one of the three options for the camera angle down here. Okay, so uh, usually I use the top angle like this, right? Top view, all right, so that you can see exactly uh, the robots, okay, from the top view. Uh, but I know uh, some of you want to see a closer look, you can click on this angle all right so this one shows you a 3d uh is a little bit 3d image uh, for your robots and also the playground so if you look uh, if you click on this angle all right this one yeah the one that little bit tilted camera uh picture here symbol you can go look at your robot and you can even rotate your playground by just left click on this on this uh, playground here and just you know uh move your uh, mouse all right get it along here so if you notice here, actually, okay, uh, these playground have a border. You can look at the VEX, VEX, VEX are all around this playground. Those are like a wall, okay? They're a wall and uh, it acts as a border of our playground. So that's why when you, uh, when I play just now, drive forward straight, non-stopping, the robot will hit the uh, the wall on the front there, all right? So let me, let me try it out, okay? Click the play. And you can actually the camera you follow the robot as well. See that? And the robot hit the wall and having an accident over there. Which uh, this is the worst case scenario. We don't want this to happen. Okay. So the mission now is failed. So we need to uh okay, we need to modify the coding a little bit. Okay, so let's go to here. We cannot drive forward, uh drive forward only. Okay, we need to give a certain uh distance to uh, for this. All right, so let's check. Okay, let me show to you here the distance between. The if you look at the playground here, it's called a grid map. Okay, the reason why it's called a grid map, you can see there's a, uh, a lot of square all over on this playground, and the distance between between one uh, square to another square in the front is two hundred millimeter. Okay, that is the measurement given by the Vexcot VR's um, uh, website here. Okay, so two hundred millimeter. Okay, let's try it out whether it's correct or not. So hide it first. This one I'm gonna. I remove this i'm gonna replace with drive forward still but this time with different blocks and these blocks allows you to put a distance all right on the right side of it okay so here okay if you look at this uh the system uh the coding is already automatically put 200 for you okay it's actually giving a hints all right basically how far between one uh, grid to another grid uh either the front or right left backwards okay so I just want to keep it like this. Okay, I don't want to change the number here because the theory is 200 millimeter. So let's go show the playground here and click play. Let's see whether the robots here can go to uh the okay, the okay, all right, can go to the front uh, grid here. Okay, let's click play. And you can see the robots go to the front here, one more grid to the front, and then it just stop there. Okay. And you can see down here as well, we have a timer. Okay, the timer is not useful for this uh, mission, but it is uh, it's going to be used for another mission that requires a timer. For example, who can program the robots to do this and that the, at the fastest time? All right, so you can use a timer here. So you don't have to uh, choose, uh, pick your, uh, for example, watch or clocks, or any others for you, to, for you to check the timer because we already have a timer the software itself okay so you don't have to any other sources okay which is very good things to have right on a on a, a software like this okay so now we need to go to we need to make the robots go to the top here so in theories if this is 200 
Okay, so how many grid that we have in the front from the starting position? If you want to make the robots go back to the starting position, you can click uh, this reset button. There's a reset button below the play buttons down here. Just click at this and your robot will go back to the starting position, which is at the bottom left corner of the screen, of the playground there. Okay, and now I wanted this one, uh, we also promote to do a little bit of mathematics here. Okay, so now you know, and now we know, all right, so the distance between one grid to another grid in the front is 200 millimeter. So now how many grids we have in the front of the robots right now? Okay, so you can check here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so nine grid in the front. Okay, don't include the grid that the robot's on top. We don't uh, we don't count that anymore because the robot is already on top of that grid. So it is, uh, it is, uh, you can neglect that. All right. So we have nine grid in the front right now. So nine times 200 millimeters. How much? Okay. So nine times two. Okay. Just, uh, just make it simple. Nine times two, you have 18. Okay. So you get back the two zero from the 200 just now. Okay. So it become 1,800. Okay, so now we know the distance from the starting point here at the bottom left corner to the very top of this uh, of the playground here. Okay, so that's what we want. We want the robot to stop over there. Let's try it out. So I'm going to hide this first and I'm going to change 200 here to 1,800. Okay, so let's try it out. So I want to click play now. Okay, so this should make the robots drive forward for 1,800 and should be stopping on the top uh, here, all right, on the top of the playground here. On the left side so let's click the play button and see all right you can see the robot's moving now and there you go it's stopping it's right now it's stopped at the at that spot that we want all right okay now you can click stop button here okay on top of the reset button so basically the play button and stop button is actually in, in the same button but you uh, whenever you click start okay your robot will uh, this symbol will change all right to stop button so that you can click Get it to stop the robots from moving anymore. Okay, so again, all right, so we managed to do that. 